Insiders say he is the leading candidate to be the next mayor of Wilmington, and he says what the current mayor is doing on social media is plain wrong. This is The Delaware Way. Welcome to The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Wilmington has an important election coming up for mayor, and we've been introducing you to the candidates. Mike Perzicki is a candidate for mayor of Wilmington. The last time you were here, you had a different job. Uh, you, were, you were head of redevelopment for the waterfront. Every candidate we've had in here, we've given an opportunity almost for an opening statement just to talk about who they are, sure. uh, and I afford you that chance as well. Sure. Well, I've been, uh, I'm 22 years in the city of Wilmington, 20 years as executive director of the Riverfront Development Corporation, where we've invested about a billion dollars in the city, where we've got two million square feet of construction. We've got 7,000 people working down here and 1,400 people living here. And when we got here, it was really pretty much a contaminated wasteland. Uh, in addition, I, um, I've been the chairman of the Hope Commission for the past 10 years, just uh, took a leave of absence from both positions to run for mayor, but uh, our signal achievement is we opened up a 10,000 square foot facility on Vandiver Avenue to help men transition from prison into uh, the community and it's been wildly successful. We've got very dedicated people, professionals, and we're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. In addition, I've got three kids, uh, two of my own and a, uh, a third that living with us, a 14 year old living with us at home and uh, we've got a great family and we're really happy here in Wilmington. When you talk to political insiders, they, they say that at this point they put you as the front runner and they say you've raised the most money and you're running a formidable campaign. However, there are eight candidates. Yeah. And when there are eight candidates, usually people with name recognition and incumbents can benefit from that. Do you, are you concerned about the vote being spread out about, among too many people? Well, I think a lot of people are, but I don't think they understand the election very well. Uh, there's, a, there's kind of one of the conventional uh, wisdom, if you will, is uh, that, the, that the electorate divides up between people who are satisfied with the mayor's performance and those who are dissatisfied and that the, uh, those challenges are all splitting up half the vote. And that's really not the way it works at all. You know, it's a, uh, this is a different election than even you might be used to in any place in Jersey or Philadelphia where the numbers are much larger. Here, we, re we really get to shake hands with everybody who is a prospective voter. We get, people get to know us very, very well. Uh, 12,000, 13,000 maybe people will vote in the entire election. So you can win by, by uh, getting to know everybody who's going to support you on a first name basis, if you will. Isn't that how the mayor benefited the last time? Isn't that how he won the last time? He counted on just a couple of, of districts you know, to come out for him, and he was skipping debates at that point. He, yeah, he actually, he actually did pretty well last time, and I would, I would argue that the mayor's strength last time uh, was that he was a law and order guy when we started to see the first spike in crime, and he was an ex-police officer. He had been an incumbent uh, representative, and I think he had a pretty good reputation at that time. And so I would, I would argue that's how he benefited. And then people in another part of the city kind of canceled out each other's votes, and so he wound up winning. But I, I would say he, you know, he, uh, he earned the election last time. How much does race come into this race? Into the I campaign? think race is an overlay uh, throughout the entire country. You can, you can look at every election and you see you see racial biases, uh, but but um, but I want to challenge those those preconceptions about race because I believe that in our city it's not a racial issue whether you're concerned about safety and especially because in our poor neighborhoods is where safety is not an abstraction. Safety is a real live issue that affects people personally, and I would say that. Uh, it's not a racial issue if you're unemployed and you're looking to which candidate is more likely to be able to attract jobs to the city. And so I th race is always an issue, but I will tell you that uh, it's not going to be dispositive of how people vote this time. It, it's all tied together, isn't it, what you were just talking about? It, it, I would argue that economic development in, in the city, that the schools, everything starts with the crime rate. You have, you have a city that has a, a bad public image across the country. It was called Murder Town USA. You have schools that aren't safe. We had a, a young girl killed in, in one of the schools. And I would imagine, and you would know this better than I, that CEOs talking about either staying here or moving here read those articles and make decisions based on that. Wouldn't you say that the, very, the top priority for anyone running for mayor has to be the crime in the city? 
It's the crime in the city, but if you look at if you look at crime as the problem, you won't solve it. If you look at it as a symptom of the deeper problems, then I think you have a real good chance of solving it. So if you look at our neighborhoods, uh, they've been so broken for so long, it's a wonder, it would, it would be a wonder if there were no crime. So if you take a look at uh, neighborhoods where, where boarded up houses, blighted houses, and burned down houses are kind of normal, uh, then behaviors kind of follow that. And it seems to me that what we have to do in our neighborhoods is grow these neighborhoods, that we have to provide jobs at any cost. We have to be as inventive as we can be in attracting people uh, to, this, uh, to our city, even if it means uh, uh, having deep uh, uh, subsidies in order to get people here. But we have to create a pulse in our neighborhoods that you and I think of as normal. And when you're in a neighborhood where the labor participation rate is 35%, working is not normal. When you're in a neighborhood where 62% of all men over 18 have been in prison, working is not normal. The, the, the kind of healthy, uh, the healthy normality that we all need for a community to thrive doesn't exist in some of our neighborhoods, and it doesn't help us to curse the darkness. We've gotta go in there and build these neighborhoods. You have to have no tolerance whatsoever for people who are slumlords and don't pay their bills and don't care of their places, and I think you start to modify behavior. So I don't think it's as long a term an issue as you can. I mean, turning around, turning around the poverty that we have in the city is certainly not gonna uh, get t taken care of over a number of years, but you have to change the mindset, not only in the, in the community you're serving, but in the government, in the government that's serving that community. I think you can, it's cultural, and I think you can change that culture of, of the service and change the culture of what's acceptable in our neighborhoods. I, I wanna just jump back to politics for one second, and the mayor skipping the debate so far, is that a strategy? That's his, that's his, the, you know, it's entirely up to Dennis. Um, everybody else has been pretty rough on the mayor. I, the problems we have preceded the mayor. Uh, I, don't disagree, I don't agree with the way he's handled things. If he doesn't want to come to debates, that's, that's a strategy that's uh, up to him. I don't think it serves him very well. I think he's, uh, he, he actually went to one debate this year and acquitted himself reasonably well, but for some reason he doesn't want to come to the others. He's been using city officials and therefore city money to put what amounts to campaign ads, although he doesn't say vote for me, on social media. Should that be investigated or should that be stopped? I don't think it's got to be investigated. It's wrong. I mean, there's just nothing right about that. You know, the public, the public needs to believe that its government is, is uh, deploys its resources efficiently. And so when the mayor has a couple of bodyguards, when the mayor uh, spends money like this, it just, it undermines whatever confidence is left in the city. And, and we can't afford that. Sir, I appreciate you coming yeah, in. Yeah, not at all. Great to see you again. Mike Brzezicki, candidate for mayor of Wilmington. When we come right back, some of the heroes of this state need more among their numbers. Volunteer firefighters, they're recruiting. If you're interested, stick around. We'll tell you how you can join.